Um, hi, I'm Alex Bronser. I'm a PhD candidate at the Faculty for Archaeology at the uh, University of Leiden. And I'm also associated with the uh, Leiden Centre for Data Science. And today I'll be talking about uh, user interface design and evaluation for online professional search in Dutch archaeology. So I don't have any cool VR or 3D stuff to show you, uh, unlike most of the other people in the session, I believe. Um, but I think um, we're all familiar with this uh, situation. You need some uh, books, some literature for your research, so you go to a library. Although nowadays you don't tend to go to such a nice one as this, but just go online. Um, but if out of all these thousands of books, we only need these two. So how do we actually find those? Um, and that's where um, advances in text mining and information retrieval can help us archaeologists. So in the case of my uh, project, the library is um, over 60,000 Dutch excavation reports, and that's over a terabyte of data. And at the moment, there's a metadata search. Uh, so you can search through the, the title description and some keywords, but we can't through, search through the entire full text uh, of all of these documents. Um, so what I'm doing in my project is basically building a search engine for these Dutch excavation reports. Uh, a bit like Google, but a bit smarter. Um, but the first thing I need to do is actually define the, the target audience for this uh, system and then also uh, sample them for a user group. Uh, so the main uh, user group will be academics, most likely, uh, using it for their research. Uh, so I managed to get five of those in my user group. And the second group are uh, commercial archaeologists, um, and I got two of those. And then there's also people, uh, archaeologists working at, the, uh, at government le at different levels, national, regional, municipal level. Uh, I had two of them, but one of them cancelled, so I've only got one at the moment. Uh, but I'm trying to uh, recruit another one to uh, continue the study. Um, so the first thing I want to do is the user requirement solicitation, see what they actually need. Um, so I put them all in a room and just ask them about the current search behavior and issues they have, uh, which is quite useful. Um, and I then showed them a, a prototype of the system. Uh, now, I did that because uh, from uh, personal experience in web development, as well as research in other humanities fields, uh, it seemed that um, users and humanities scholars uh, specifically have difficulty putting their, uh, their needs into words. So it's much easier to just show them a prototype that doesn't work well and have them criticize it, basically. Uh, so that's what we did. And then I asked them uh, for feedback on the functionality, see what they liked, what they didn't like, and what they wanted to add. So then put them in uh, groups of two and had them uh, rank uh, basically a list of new functionality that I would like to add and also for them to add their own um, functionality they would like and um, basically give them all a score of one to three. Now what came out of that is uh, these are the top uh, five uh, user interface um, um, user requirements um, and we can see basically there's two things they really need. It's uh, searching on a map and facets. So for searching on a map, they want to be able to plot the results on a map, also uh, draw polygons so they can uh, search in a specific area, um, and also a morphology or archaeological expectation overlay. And then the second thing, the facets are basically uh, like the, the filters you get on e-commerce commerce sites. So you have your results, you can filter down uh, on certain criteria, I'll show that in a moment. So I then integrated this into the, the next version of the system, uh, version 0.3. And um, yeah, so you see a, uh, yeah, uh, this bit is a query builder where you can use um, Boolean and or logic to build a query. This one's very simple. It's just, um, I'm just looking for artifacts that are scrapers. Um, fire that off and you get a number of results. And here I've really gone for um, basically simulating, simulating an e-commerce um, uh, website as it's very familiar for most <coughs> users. Um, so we have the, the filters or facets here, and then the, uh, the results with some snippets that most people are used to uh, from Google, for example. So next up is the, uh, then a year later, I got the group together again and did a, a user interface evaluation. Uh, but this wasn't in a group, this was one-on-one, uh, -on -one, so uh, take uh, each person and go through the system. And they use the uh, talk aloud protocol, which is basically where you ask the users to um, say everything they're thinking, everything they, they don't like, they do like, what, what they expect where, um, which is used quite a lot in uh, usability um, research. Um, I recorded the sounds, also took screencasts and some notes. 
Um, and then I let the users perform some predefined tasks, so some queries that I wanted them to do, as well as their own tasks. Uh, just I asked them to do a couple of queries that they might use in their own research. And had a little questionnaire afterwards, uh, just uh, seeing what they liked and what they didn't like. So uh, some of the results from that study. Um, so here we see a graph that shows the um, time taken per query element. Um, that's just to, um, uh, so you don't have the difference between very long queries and very short queries, you cut them up into elements. So basically, um, for example, artifacts is scraper as one element. Um, but then, then plotted them over the number of queries that they did. So all the colored lines are the different users, and the black line is the mean. Um, so we can see that the, on average, we, there's a clear downward trend um, at a fairly steep angle. So I would say that indicates the system is, um, well, fairly easy to learn, at least. Um, also, if we look at the uh, number of issues, uh, number of new issues per user, and when I say issues, I mean both things that don't work well as things they would like to add. Uh, we see that the uh, new is issues found per user that we add uh, decreases quite rapidly. Um, and that basically means that a small group is enough for these kind of uh, usability evaluations. And this is basically backed up in other uh, humanities fields as well, where we see the same thing. Um, basically, five to eight people tends to be uh, more than enough. Um, also, I found that uh, 19 out of 29 usability issues were raised by only one of the user groups. Um, that just shows that it's very important to collect um, a very diverse um, um, user group. Make sure you have all the different groups in your user group in your, uh, in your study. Um, then for the, uh, the questionnaires afterwards, I translated these into English and made a word cloud out of it to see if I could get anything interesting out of it, just to summarize all the feedback. Um, this looks quite interesting, uh, but the problem is that it's not clear what is positive or negative. So we've got confusing and clear. Maybe there was not in front of it, I'm not sure. And this map, this is not very useful. Uh, especially these value words are very difficult to, uh, to interpret, so confusing, good, handy, etc. But if you split them out into positive and negative statements, uh, you get a much clearer picture. Um, so we see that the, the query builder and the map are things that uh, the users like or find um, are good. And uh, some negative aspects are the, the, the concepts. I won't go into detail there. Uh, the facets are still unclear and the apparently the and or buttons were very hard to find. So the um, take home messages and or discussion points if any if you disagree. Um, yeah, so it's very important to assemble a varied user group. Uh, make sure you have a good sample of the people that will be using your system. Uh, if you want easy requirements, um, illustration, build a prototype. It just makes everything a lot easier. Um, using the Think Aloud method plus a questionnaire and a screencast seems to work well for recording these types of uh, studies. Um, and use both predefined and uh, personal tasks to evaluate with. Because what I found is that during the um, uh, personal task, we actually found a lot more issues and um, uh, the, the users started to uh, use the system much more freely. So it was very interesting. Um, and yeah, for usability evaluation, um, a relatively small user group, five to eight people is, um, is enough, generally. And yeah, as I just showed, the word clouds can uh, summarize feedback but you do need to split them into positive and ne negative statements. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you.